There were two very interesting women in the Bible called Mary and Martha. We read about them in the Gospels. Now these two were sisters. They were actually the brother of Lazarus. Remember Lazarus, who Christ raised from the dead? When he um, had died for four days, and Christ said, Lazarus, come forth, and he came forth, the man in his grave clothes and so on. Well, his two sisters were Mary and Martha. And they lived together in, in the same home in a town called Bethany. And Jesus was very good friends with them. In fact, such good friends that whenever he came to town and, was, and he was in the area, he would go and stay with these people, um, sleep there, eat there, and so on. They were good friends of his. Which is why when Lazarus actually died, they, the sisters, they sent for Jesus, come, your friend is, is ill. And we know, we know the story. So I want to talk about these two sisters. Now, rabbis, by custom and tradition, they would move around the country. They would go from village to village or town to town, and they would sit down and teach. Now, when they sat to teach, there would be their disciples that would gather around, always men, never women. So these men or disciples of this rabbi would sit, literally sit at his feet and listen to the master, listen to the rabbi with all his wisdom and knowledge of the Torah and God's laws and so on and do the teachings. That's the way it worked. That was the practice. So Jesus, of course, is a rabbi also. So he sat down in the house of Lazarus, Mary and Martha and as he was there, his disciples was around and he was teaching. Now, Martha, one of the sisters, was with the men. She was sitting at Jesus' feet just like all the other disciples, listening to Jesus. She wanted to hear what Jesus had to say, the words that he would speak. Because remember, never a man spake like this. He didn't speak like the scribes and Pharisees. He spoke with, as one having authority. And she would hear him speak and, and she was so thrilled and blessed and so on. She wanted to hear more. She wanted to be at his feet. She wanted to learn. Now, her sister, um, so this is, this is Mary. Mary was doing that. Uh, Martha was the one that was in the kitchen. And she was doing what women of the day would do. The parameters of women, their boundaries, they would be in the kitchen. They would be serving, serving the men. So the men would be seated around hearing this teaching and so on, but such teachings is not for women. Women not supposed to read the Torah, not supposed to re read about God's law and be educated and schooled in the, in the things of God. They were just men. In fact, there was a rabbinical teaching that said God don't speak to women at all. Nonsense, of course. But that was a belief by some of the day. So here is Martha in the kitchen, in, tr in the traditional role of what women were supposed to do. Serving in the kitchen with men around and so on. Mary, however, wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear and be taught exactly what the men were being taught. Because she wanted to be a full disciple, not just in the kitchen, making the food. She wanted to be a full disciple, so she wanted to sit with Jesus and hear his wonderful teachings. The sister now didn't like this, of course. She got the ump a bit, and she came to the Lord because she thought this was unfair. Mary shouldn't be doing this. Mary should be doing what I am doing. In the kitchen, that's what we do as women. In the kitchen, cooking the food, getting ready to serve, and serving the men. But Mary wasn't doing that, so Martha didn't like it. So Mary didn't go to her sister and say, you know, hey sis, how oh, come you're not helping me in the kitchen? No. She went to Jesus and said, Jesus, look, look what she's doing. Tell her to come and help me in the kitchen. Now what did Jesus do? What was his response? Jesus actually gave a mild rebuke, if you like, to Martha. He said, you know, you're, you're cumbered about with so much care. You're distracted with all of that. Mary has chosen the better part. What was the better part that Mary chose? The better part was being in the position of hearing what the creator of the universe was saying. 
The better part was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to his teachings, embracing it, loving it. The better part was being spiritual, not in the kitchen cooking, serving food. So Mary chose the better part. Jesus did not rebuke Mary. Hey Mary, actually, why are you here with, with us men? Why didn't you, why aren't you in the kitchen helping your sister? Can't you see she's there by herself? I have 12 disciples, and there may have been more around, but you know, I have 12 disciples, all men, and I'm here, that's 13, and we wanna want, we're going to want some food, and you're letting her do all of that, preparation and cooking and so on, for all of us, while you sit there and do nothing? You're a woman, why aren't you in the kitchen? The Lord didn't have the attitude, and he didn't say any of that. The Lord commended Mary, for coming outside of the confines of the traditional traditional role of women to be able to sit at Jesus' feet and hear his teachings. That is much better than whatever they cook and serve and eat. Huh? Spiritual food does far more for us than a natural food. Of course we need natural food to eat, to survive, but you, we can't, man cannot live by bread alone. It's by every word of that proceeded out of the mouth of God as man live by. And so, Mary now, think about this. She knew what her role was in society, traditionally, by custom, of what a woman's role should be. And she said, no, why I see this, I acknowledge this, but I want to learn of Christ. I want to sit at the foot of Jesus. I want to hear his teachings. I want to be a disciple. I want to follow him just like the men. She was doing that to her Messiah, her Lord. Christ commended her for that. So, women today who have a hard time by some preachers, they're told that they should just be in silence, sitting down, not doing anything. Not preaching, not teaching, not doing anything. That wasn't Christ's way. This is a controversial era, because you know, people preach, there shouldn't be women preachers and all this and so on. I'm telling you from my understanding of the scriptures, Women can be disciples just like men. Women can be ministers of the gospel just like men. So women, if God has given you a gift, not your own ideas or ambition or your pride, I want to be like the men. I want a title too. None of that stuff. If Christ, if God himself has given you the gift of whatever office in ministry, the doesn't matter the office is, prophetess or pastor or deaconess whatever it doesn't matter if you have this calling of God upon your life and you know that God has given you this gift don't deny it don't deny it and go back into the confines of men's expectations that says you must keep quiet in church you must know within yourself you are saved the spirit of God is in you if you know that God has called you for something don't disobey his call don't ignore his call because of what men might say. Some won't believe me. They might think it's wrong. No. If you have the conviction in your heart that God has called you to something, and you know it, it's not just your fanciful thinking or your ambition or your pride. None of that stuff. I'm talking about real, genuine conviction. When you know in your spirit that God has called you for a certain work, don't be in the kitchen like Martha. Be at the feet of Jesus like Mary. Learn of him. Be schooled by him. Be led by him. They that are led of the Spirit are the sons of God. And that's not just for men. Women can be led of the Spirit too. Because they also are the sons of God. So, whether we're male or female. If the Lord has given us a work to do. Because he gives talents to his servants. We must all work the work that Christ has given to us. As I think it was Paul who said, make full proof of your ministry. Don't deny it. Don't hide it and put it aside because men may, you know, blah, blah, blah. No. If God has called you to do it, make sure you do it. Because at the end of the day, you have to give an answer for the call of God upon your life. And you can't point the finger of this, this one, that one who said this, who thought that. And that's why I didn't do it, Lord. No. Do what God says. Fulfill his purpose is calling upon your life and you will do well.